to throw jam so you could have practice partners. <laughs> <laughs> so leading into that became this era of this, that, that a lot of folks, uh, today you, you hear and you see, they talk about the 90s and this huge originality movement uh, and where, I don't, I don't mean to use this word in a, uh, in a bad way, but you know, the weird movement, like people are just really creating and, and really pushing the boundaries of what they can do as breaking. Uh, and Nance is gonna talk about that uh, because you kind of grew up in that time with rhythm bugs. Yeah. So, uh, explain it. <laughs> um, first and foremost, I wanna shout out Bug Eye Bandit. Um, he's actually the oh, first man. person to show me anything when it comes to breaking. You guys know who Bug Eye Bandit is? They call it Rock Bandit now. He, yeah, he does a lot of rock like He's nice with the rocking now. But yeah, um, I wasn't breaking and I had seen him. And then I asked him, hey, you know, show me something. So then he actually tried to show me some footwork, tried to show me like a basic b-boy freeze. And, um, and I'll never forget that, because a lot of times back then when people try to ask you questions, you kind of blow them off like, oh, you know, nah. But he didn't do that, so I want to shout out Bug Eye Bandit. Um, as far as the 90s, um, you know, basically I know, I know E. Swift, I, I looked up to Saki and B-Boy Alliance. I basically, I come from that. Um, you know, seeing people do different moves, original moves, and uh, you know, having style. Basically, uh, first time I went and hung out with Reveal and, um, and my boy Frank, and a lot of these other people, um, like foot soldiers and you know, my history, basically the first time I hung out with them, they were telling me, you're the first dude we've seen do style. We've never even seen style, basically. They're like, cause you know, they were trying to do flare, windmill flare, headspin flare, cricket, jackhammer, jackhammer, you know, like old power moves. So I come from that era, basically offspring of like B-Boy Alliance and um, Shout out to Easy Rock, because when Easy Rock came to San Diego, uh, he blew me and all my homies' minds, and the moves he was doing was amazing. Um, the footwork, super clean, you know what I mean? And, you know, B-Boy Summits, basically, I come from that. And, you know, back then, a lot of stuff hadn't been done. So this is kind of before you started seeing, like, yoga, and people hadn't seen different things, or capoeira, or kung fu. So a lot of people were, doing moves that had already really been done somewhere else too. They just didn't know it. So we're thinking like, oh man, there's so much stuff that hasn't been done. So then we just started creating. Yeah, and breaking. Basically, you know, a lot of people didn't know that, you know, if you watch some old Kung Fu flicks, you're seeing some stuff that you're like, oh, Remind did that. Well, Remind did that. You know, maybe he saw that Kung Fu movie or, you know, Brilliant Minds Think Alike too. So um, we were just trying new moves, trying to be flexible. Uh, stretch, do different things that hadn't been done, you know. Someone did it with two hands, we want to do it with one. Well, if he did it like this, then we got to be able to do it this way. And so creativity became like a normal. A lot of crews started making up their own moves. Like, I have my own signature freezes that, you know, I don't want to see people do one, you know. And that's how, you know, B-Boy started becoming that. Like, oh, that's so-and-so's move, or, you know, he made that up because basically, you know, a lot of people weren't doing different things or original, you know, swipe, windmill, flare, windmill, and, you know, generic moves in general. So, B1 started becoming more advanced like that. And then you started seeing, like, the strong man. And then it went to the circus. Because now you're like, man, somebody can actually hold their self with one bot, with one arm, for 30 seconds. And back then, we didn't think that was possible. So, your mind started saying, oh, man, we can take it to a whole nother level. And this stuff is all really possible. So that's kind of what you see with the 90s. The 90s started off basic, and then, you know, and then it started getting a little more and more advanced. You know, and B-Boy too, the whole time, everybody still wants to do the fly footwork and, you know, the nice tops and everything. But as far as just being able to fly, people weren't flying back then. I mean, people started flying mid-90s, late 90s, and, you know, B-Boy hasn't been the same since. So, you know, I come from that era, and um, it was a great era. No, I think it's is the start of what kind of fueled modern day breaking. And I actually see a lot of folks from this era, right, that aren't even in San Diego. You guys raise your hands. Yeah, yeah, you know. Yep. You got stunts in the back, got house, flexi, flexo. 
Stun. <laughs> Shout out to Stunts, that's my man right there. We go way stunt, back. Give it up, Stunt. Boy, Stunt, man. You know, we, there's actually a lot of, a lot of folks with knowledge here, so don't, you know, go up, introduce yourself, say what's up, because this, this, I think, era was really the start of what threw Breaking to where it is today. And you can tell there's a lineage, there's, there's this lineage involved, this, uh, I was gonna say ancestry, but it's not old. A lineage, you know what I mean? So, now, it went from this, this movement, it went to power, then it went to creating, creating, really thinking outside the box. Then there was like this, this push to, to really bring it back to, to understanding fundamentals. And that's where I want to talk uh, to Optic about, you know, the start of Rock So Fresh and kind of like the focus on this fundamental style after, you know, this creation movement. Because it's all, it's all, it's all hip hop. Yeah. Uh, Rock So Fresh, it, it's, it was a long journey because I, I was East of Era. I, I'm 40, I'm, I'm 41, so I was watching these, these guys grow up and I, I battled Rock City and me and my brother won, by the way, over in Paradise Hill. <laughs> I won first place. Uh, it was like me and my brother against like nine. Or, um, and then in Claremont, we, we came second to IGC. So these guys, you know, they're in their generation, but we were the young cast, like, looking up, like, okay, we're gonna come out of the shadows. So that was in the 80s. 90s, um, I learned the power moves. Uh, I started off popping, I learned from power moves, and then and the footwork was secondary. Um, I quit dancing probably like 96. 95, 96. Um, I, I didn't, I, I did paros, but nothing moved me. We were dancing to like electro, like kind of rock, and, and Wu Tang. Not that that was good uh, music, but it just it didn't move me. So it wasn't until I stopped to realize I heard breaks and James Brown, and I just jumped up. Um, so I just I dissected that, like what was that that moved me? So I, I met Saki, and he educated me with music. Um, main one, Son of Drill came next, and with that, I studied music. What, what, of, what about music that moved me? So I broke down the symbols, the kick. What are those nuances that made me move? So think of a drum roll, boom, boom, bap. So I started thinking of moves that would coordinate with that, and, and, and a slide symbol, so I started thinking of moves that would coordinate with that. Um, so it wasn't until 98 to 2000 I was developing myself and understanding what nuances and what um, moves that I like and threw away 10 years of movements that I've learned already. It wasn't until 2001 um, I started really learning uh, vocabulary in terms of like movements um, and hip hop terms. So when I when I heard of these words rock so fresh. My friend uh, Joy Gold, who was my mentor, um, he really broke down and made me understand what rocking fresh and nuances um, I put in my dance. So based on that, that whole journey, um, I started focusing on just musicality and understanding uh, angles and, and being finesse and smooth and just putting. 10 years of history of what power moves I want to do, what footwork I want to do, and focused on that. Because at the time, I, I was frustrated with, with competition. I'm not a good competition b-boy. Even though I can do the moves, I can't compete. So it was a uh, deterrent for me to break. So it wasn't until I was at clubs, just dancing, in the garage, just dancing, um, really slow to really understand my, my own body movement. So, 28, I started Rock So Fresh, and really it just kind of inclined to have a goal. Um, with creativity, of course. Um, and that's pretty much the movement of Rock So Fresh, and then members started coming in asking me questions, and I was like, whoa, like, I was intrigued by like, okay, I'm not the only one, there's people that get it. I thought like, I was crazy in my mind, like trying to figure this dance out. And to this day, I'm still inspired, and especially with these, these guys right here. <laughs> 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 <laughs>